Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new, karibu welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always making time to come and be with me. I want just to talk about things to know before coming to Lamu. I'll give you tips, the do's and don'ts uh, from my experience. So just an overview of my trip. I uh, was in Lamu for one week and it was a good time. It was a very, very good time. I really enjoyed the place. It's such a calm, serene. I would actually say most of the beauty of Lamu is yet, is yet to be discovered. I feel like I'm allowed to call it virgin land, you know, because everything is still so pure, so fresh, so new, so natural. And that just blew me away. It just blew me away. And the other thing I noticed is people are really quite friendly in Lamu but as well they are very communal like extremely communal that's one thing that i also noticed so the first thing i think i can point out is you need to be very sure of where you're coming to exactly in lamu lamu is such a huge county it's a huge place but for visitors there are actually three places so you have lamu old town you have shela island and you have manda island so it is good for you to know where exactly your accommodation is when you're booking it because then that will help you if for instance you book your accommodation in lamu old town then it will prepare you to know that you'll need a boat to move around to shela you'll need a boat to move around to manda island and vice versa the other thing i noticed is this place is extremely hot it being very hot then i would encourage that you carry lots of sunscreen you definitely gonna need them because the sun feels like it's literally right here you know it's 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 that hot the other thing i noticed uh, with lamo is um, things are actually uh, pricey here i would blame maybe the pricey aspect on the channel of transportation before it gets to the retailers or the distributors here in lamu there's too much transportation that's needed and eventually it has to come via the boat remember lamu is an island so you at some point have to use the boat to get to where you're going but i mean you're out on holiday you're here for holiday so I'm sure you're well prepared with some, you know, extra cash. Lamu is an island. And so movement in Lamu is going to be most of the time via a boat. If you choose to use uh, a private boat, it's around 500, 600, depending on your negoci negotiation skills. Um, it could even be 400. There was a time I paid 400. And then if you go with the passenger boats those ones are constant it's 100 uh, kenya shillings aside from the boat being the main means of transport the minute you get to where you're going mostly if you're going to like lamu old town there are motorbikes but they are not allowed to get to some specific places so those are also not that reliable because the areas the motorbikes are not allowed by the county uh, government but if not then you can walk one or if you cannot walk then you can also take a donkey ride if you're comfortable to do it the other thing is i've seen people say that you should try and avoid wearing skimpy things when you're in lamu yeah there's that aspect but i mean it's just because you want to respect the culture of the people here because most of the women their culture here is still the swahili traditional uh, kind of uh, way of dressing that involves a lot of covering up from the head all the way you know the buibuis and the hijabs that's not to say they're not people who wear skimpy things but you'd actually feel so uncomfortable and i don't think you want to put yourself in that position it can actually get so bad because like i remember there was this day when we were walking from the beach so we just uh, had a swim and i was carrying my son and i figured there's no need for me to dress up because we're not so far away from you know the the apartment and so i just decided to tie over my my rapper like aleso or myself and then i carried my son in in a way i figured that's you know that's that's enough covering but as i was walking because my back was out you would actually hear men saying jifunike jifunike that that means cover up you know so you might want to just consider those small small things just to ensure you don't ruffle feathers with the locals here you're on holiday you don't want to get anybody mad right now when you go back to your hometown or wherever you're coming from you can wear what you want to wear right yeah 
Let me talk about tour guides. Lamu being a tourist destination, of course, you need tour guides who are going to show you around. So the first advice I'll give you is make sure you work with your host to connect you to a tour guide. Because the minute you leave your boat, all these people are going to come wanting to talk to you. They will all want to come and market their services to you but if you already have spoken to your host and they will connect you to someone then it's much easier you're safer and it's probably gonna be uh, cheaper for you because then this person will be would have been introduced to you by a local you understand what i mean as opposed to you as the traveler or someone who's a foreigner coming in to negotiate with you know these tour guides yeah but there's really no need to worry because most of the tour guides here i've seen are licensed so that's a very very good thing if anybody is found walking around with a tourist and they don't have the license then they're in in trouble yeah so that for me i felt is a very good thing it ensures that tourists are safe and they feel safe as far as the tour guides are concerned you'll notice the prices will depend with your negotiation skills so bring your best foot forward yeah the other thing I think I need to mention is try and carry cash because I've noticed most shops here do not allow the use of Lipa and pesa for the Kenyans, you understand. If you get one who allows um pesa payments, they only have send money, you know, they don't have a till number or pay bill. So I think it's just safe to ensure you carry uh, cash that way you'll be safe at this point allow me to talk about the activities or things to do in Lamu there are not so many activities to do in Lamu like aside from chilling and hanging out on the beach taking a walk to the donkey sanctuary going for the sand dunes uh, going to see the sunset you know on the Dow cruise um, checking out the mangrove trees and taqua ruins uh, there's really not much that you can do if you're to do any of those activities, because first of all, remember, movement involves a lot of uh, boat rides, then they tend to be quite expensive. So Lamu is a place where I would recommend, if you can, travel in a group. You'd save more if you travel in a group. But if it's not possible to travel in a group and you're a solo traveler, try and be very, very open in terms of uh, being friendly and being open to, you know, being joined to other groups that way you'll save money but if money is not a problem then you can go ahead and just do the activities alone but as a budget traveler because i'm traveling for youtube and for work i have to really save coin here and there i try and join a group because i'm still a solo traveler right now but still traveling for youtube and so i need to save a lot of money so i can do more travels so for instance a boat ride or a dow cruise to see the sunset if I was to take the boat alone, I'll be charged around 6,000, 7,000 Kenya shillings, all right? But if we are a group, then that price can go down. Depending on the number, we can pay 3,000 Kenya shillings, or if we are more, we can even pay 1,000 Kenya shillings. So you understand what I'm trying to say? I don't know if you can hear the noise in the background. It's Friday, so it's mosque day here in Lamu. <laughs> we have to respect that, but work must continue, right? this is a muslim dominated uh, area and that means there are times when they will close their shops to go and pray that's mostly around 12 noon and 6 p.m in the evening and they close for like 30 minutes so during those times you might want to get your things before that time just in case there's something you need just ensure you try and shop before those particular times oh one thing i noticed is there are not so many butcheries here in uh, like lamu old town now why am i talking about butchery two things uh you can either be staying in an airbnb when you need to cook for yourself or you're staying in a hotel but if you're staying in Lamu Old Town, most of the places is just Airbnbs where they have the kitchen and all that. So you need to buy ingredients and food stuff to cook. So most of the meat places that I was seeing is just like a shop that has all the meats there. There's no freezer, there's no fridge, and they only sell the meat in the morning. So at some point, the meat is going to run out, they'll close shop, and they will, you'll only find meat the next morning. You understand? So like, there's a specific time when you, where you need to, when you need to buy your meat. 
and that's from morning up until around 11. There was a day I came out and I was trying to get meat at 12 and I didn't get anything. Like all the meat places were closed simply because they don't have a freezer or a fridge, uh, you know, in those stop or the, the shops and so they just sell the meat and they just sell the meat for the day close early and just go home until the next the next day the other thing if you want to buy chicken like raw chicken for your cooking in your airbnb you need to prepare yourself to buy a full chicken they do not have like pieces you know the way you have like assorted you know uh chicken or in kenya you know how you have you can go to the butcher and tell them you want just half the chicken or a quarter of the chicken no they don't have that here you just have to buy a whole chicken i found that to be very interesting but it's it, it it's what happens when you go to a new place when you go to rome you do as the romans do right for those of us that like to drink if you're staying in shela or manda you're in a hotel then you get drinks easily if you're staying in Lamu Old Town, the culture here again, you know, it's Muslim dominated. And so they don't believe in, you know, alcohol selling and all that. It's just their religion and, you know, their culture. So you'll not find so many places where they're selling alcohol. So in case you need alcohol, there are only two places where you can buy. And there's a depot, which is very next to the AP, Administrative Police. Uh, there's a camp so there's a, they have a depot there where you can buy your alcohol and then also the police canteen they have like a nice proper restaurant where you can sit and drink or even buy and take away yeah but avoid walking around with alcohol in the town because the locals here don't like it so um, if you're actually from Lamu please comment down below let me know if there are things that maybe I've omitted you know things that you know you want to advise someone who is planning to travel to Lamu or someone who wants to visit Lamu just comment down down below and let us know some extra tips i know there's more you would know as a local as compared to me who just went there for one week before i wrap up the video this was a budget travel for us and so we were not out to spend like a lot of money in anything because we wanted to save a lot you understand when you're traveling for youtube and you're not yet getting paid you will understand the struggle so two adults and a toddler and it being a budget travel we didn't stay in a hotel we chose to stay in an airbnb and then we did not eat out we went and bought stuff food stuff and we were cooking in the house we stayed in lamu for a week and we chose to fly to lamu other than take a bus we would have taken the bus but i think i've already explained in another video that i'm still scared of taking the bus because we were coming from Malinde to Lamu and you know there was there was a time when I didn't have a good a good experience on the road especially with Al Shabaab militants so flights to Lamu are mostly in the morning and flights leaving Lamu are in the evening and for all the airlines you know I realized they only have one flight into Lamu and one flight out of Lamu so I didn't see so many flights that are coming into Lamu but I only saw fly safari link or safari link and skyward express so when you're planning to travel try and check that so in total we had a budget of uh, 500 usd and we slightly surpassed that so 55,000 kenya shillings was enough for us for the one week for two adults and a toddler that is inclusive of food travel and our activities so let me know if this video has helped you and if it has please give it a thumbs up kindly subscribe 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 hit that subscribe button it's absolutely free and as always remember to be kind to one another love one another and treasure every minute you spend with one another because tomorrow is never promised i have officially started my travel board and look what i got <laughs> look at what i got lamu tamu so i'm gonna hang this on my travel board and i intend to get a very big uh how do i call it i intend to get a very big um world map and so i'll be taking every place i go i take and aside from that there will be this little little souvenirs that i'll be picking up from the different towns the different places that i visit and i thought this is a good way to start so if you love traveling you know how cool that is yeah and then Lamu has actually been very good and I've made some friends here and I got a gift. I got a gift from my Lamu friends. <laughs> so let's open it and see 
let's open it and see what we got i'm always very bad at at opening wrapped up gifts but no worries i always keep saying it's already mine so it doesn't matter how i open it let's see oh oh i'm just gonna tear this and this was specifically made for me for the adventures of marie oh wow nice oh i wish we can write adventures of marie somewhere here i'll look for something so we can just write this adventures of marie but i really love this this is so nice and i love that it has red which is my favorite color wow such a nice one thank you so much Lamu my Lamu friends my Lamunian friends eh? they call Lamunian friends all right guys that's the end of this video officially <laughs> i'll see you guys on my next one bye